Welcome to the breakout session portion of the BPMCon event. This is the breakout session for Oracle Corporation, and I'd like to welcome back our expert presenter for this session, Ajay Khanna, Director of BPM Product Marketing. Ajay, welcome back to BPMCon. Thanks. Glad to be back. Ajay, for many of you might be familiar, drives Oracle's BPM technology and solutions for customer adoption. He has 15 years' experience in BPM, CRM, and ERP application systems. And prior to his joining Oracle, he was an executive at Kana and at Progress Savion BPM. In today's session, Ajay looks at one of the more exciting new trends in BPM. In his session, entitled Adaptive Case Management, Delivering Right Customer Experience, He'll take a look at how the demand among customers for what he calls a multi-channel experience and engagement is actually driving some very innovative solutions for adaptive case management with BPM. Just a quick reminder, if you haven't already done so, you can download Ajay's slides right now. They're available right under the viewing area. Simply click the link under that area. You'll also see that Ajay and his team have brought some terrific downloadable resources, some white papers and other product overviews and case studies. We'll make those available for you during the session as well. And we like to make this interactive where we can. So to ask a question or a comment of Ajay, simply type into the question box. So Ajay, it's over to you and tell us about adaptive case management. Sure, Vance. So let's go and get started. So Today, there is a lot of discussion around customer experience, and customer experience is a key differentiator for many organizations today, whether it is retail, it is banking, telecommunication, transportation, but it is also a huge challenge for the companies to deliver this effective and the right customer experience. So today, companies offer a wide range of products and services to their customers. And customers interact with companies using multiple channels, whether that is email, mobile, social, phone, web cell service, so on and so forth, to engage with companies and to do business. So the companies need to manage and deliver the desired experience throughout the customer journey. What I mean by that is the customer journey starts from the customer searching for a product. Then they go ahead and start evaluating a product or a service. Then they may go into a selection phase, then there is a purchasing part to it. And then once they purchase the product, they start using the product, they may need support. So customer experience is not just at one point in time, but it is about supporting the customer throughout their journey. So with wide range of customer demographics, wide range of customer needs, many products and services, as well as the increased interaction with the customers, how can we make sure that the customers are getting what they want? And are we providing them with the right service at right point in time? Are our employees making the right decisions and the right offers to the customers at right point in time? And is it even possible to predict and design for all the permutations and combinations of customer types, of customer issues, of customer channels, of our products? So these are the kind of issues that we are going to tackle today in this session when we talk about adaptive case management. So are the customers being pushed through assembly lines? Are we herding all of our customers through a single predetermined process? That process which was built in, for example, a CRM system or a sales system or a support application, and maybe that was implemented like 10 years back or so, many times we make customers jump through unnecessary hoops just because our systems cannot handle their request. We ask unnecessary information because that's what the application is requiring. So the problem is that these applications do not really understand the context of the customer, the customer need, customer value, or the special needs, and cannot morph according to those needs. So the workers using these applications and trying to help the customers are so constrained by these rigid processes in the application that they have to take the customer through this one-size-fits-all experience, which first of all leads to customer dissatisfaction, and second thing is, it also leads to frustration of the knowledge worker or the case worker or the representative themselves. And any situation which kind of falls outside these predefined processes, outside these standard rigid processes, are usually done manually. We may use emails, we may use notepads, we may use Excel spreadsheet, and usually there is also a uh, need for after-the-fact data entry. So this makes the whole process really inefficient. 
But consider, what if all your situations and the cases that your knowledge worker, that your customer service representatives handle are non-standard? Only 15 to 20 percent of situations are addressed by predefined processes. How will you plan for such a process? Even if you wanted to model such a process, it may not be possible because it is very hard to predict all the situation. It is very hard to predict all the exceptions. It is very hard to predict and design for all the permutation and the combinations from starting to the end of the process. So these kind of processes are really, really hard to design as well. So what do customers want? Customers today want the experience that is contextual. So do not offer me a new phone when I'm calling to complain about my bill. They do not want to repeat the information when they are passed from one department to another, when they are passed from, transferred from one agent to another agent. Secondly, customers want companies and in turn the processes to adapt to the customer's need and not vice versa. And third key thing is, customers are interacting on social networks, they are using multiple mobile devices and want the customer experience to adapt to their newer needs. They want to engage from any device from anywhere in the world and also want to be heard when they share their experiences on the social networks. So what is adaptive? What does being adaptive mean? So before we discuss how we can address these newer needs of the customers and how we can deliver this great experience and this adaptive customer experience, let's understand what do I mean when I say being adaptive. So an adaptive process adapts to customer needs. It adapts to customer type. Is customer an individual customer? Is it a corporate customer? Is it a government official? Is it a very, very important person, VVIP account? So what is the customer type? It adapts to the type of incident. It adapts to the events that are happening while that process has started or before that process has started. It adapts to the different request types. So adaptiveness also requires this sense of empowerment of knowledge workers to determine the process steps rather than running through the rigid application and it allows them to handle all the unpredictable situations that may come while processing that particular case. So to make all this happen, understanding the context is very important. So if we take an example of process which is very repeatable, we can take an example of a credit card enrollment. You can go to a website, apply for a credit card. It's a very straight through, one and done kind of a process. But compare this kind of a process to a billing dispute or an insurance claim process. So these kind of processes are handled very differently because the situation is different, the customer types may be different. In cases of insurance claims, the property might be different. So we cannot really define one design of a process to meet all the needs around these particular cases. So how can we achieve this adaptability or this dynamic behavior in the process? How can we enable our processes to be adaptive? And there are three key drivers of adaptive behavior, so I'm going to go over those. First of all, rules-driven adaptability. Some of the adaptability and the dynamic behavior in processes, it can come from business rules. Rules can determine the flow in the process or the process fragments that are part of a particular case. Rules can determine the approval hierarchy, for example, approvals for claims, what is the approval sequence for loans, and the whole hierarchy and the sequence of approvals can be determined via rules. Rules can define the work reallocation as well as resource leveling. So if there is an agent who is working on a particular case with a particular skill set and if that agent is overloaded, rules can kick in to redistribute the work. Rules in user interfaces can uh, determine the dynamic behavior or adaptiveness of the user interfaces. For example, if the claim is about an individual in a car accident, we need a certain type of information. But if the car belongs to a business and an employee is driving it, then information required may be different. So rules can adjust that kind of information requirement in the forms and user interfaces. Next is event-driven adaptability. So this is also very interesting. So human or system-driven events can affect the user interfaces delivered to the case worker, or it can affect the case progression itself. So take, for example, if the person has applied for a mortgage for a loan, 
and while his or her application is being processed, the person files for a divorce or loses a job. These are different life events which are happening. So how these events should affect the processing of that particular case? So you should be able to describe how events influence a case entity or trigger or invoke various tasks or rules. These events can be internal to your organization or these could be external to your process or even to your organization. So such capabilities require very rich event correlation, event pattern detection, as well as actionable alerts using business activity monitoring or BAM capability that can adjust the rules as well as processing of the case during runtime. The third driver is user-driven adaptability. Now this is where the knowledge worker takes over and makes sure that the process or the case is following the desired path as per the situation or the need of the customer. It may involve adding additional approvers or the participants to a case. It may involve creating and assigning subtasks, picking tasks from various available tasks to decide what should happen next. So it may also mean reassignments or rerouting of the task. So here we are providing a lot of power, a lot of control in hands of the knowledge worker to determine how the case should move forward. So this is all about empowerment of the knowledge worker to serve the customer and delivering the excellent customer experience. So they can decide what is the type of the customer, what are their actual needs, and how I should make sure that this customer is helped in the best way possible. On the other hand, this may also involve the process owner to alter the process data, rules, or even flows in bulk for multiple instances of a case or a process. For example, if a certain policy changes or a government regulation changes, you want to make bulk changes to the process, you can do that. So this can be done to the in-flight partially completed process instances too. So now let's see what is adaptive case management. So adaptive case management lets you manage cases like insurance claims, like non-standard loans, like benefits eligibility and fulfillment, and create individual tasks from a complex work item. It provides the knowledge worker or the agent with flexibility to add activities to a case instance. It lets users to alter the flow or even to add participants in the case at runtime. So the progression of the case itself, whether it is an insurance claim or whether it is a benefits fulfillment, can be event-driven or can be led by knowledge worker as we discussed in previous slides. So it also requires policy-driven or rules-driven governance so that there is a check on how the knowledge worker is actually driving the process forward. So there are still rules and regulations to be followed and we can ensure that those compliance needs, those governance needs are being met. Most of the time, case management needs document routing as well as content management. So that is also a very critical part and component of adaptive case management. So in following slides, I will review some of these capabilities and also how Oracle BPM Suite provides and supports these capabilities. By the way, adaptive case management is integral and integrated part of Oracle BPM Suite itself. So it's not a separate product, it is part of Oracle BPM Suite. First of all, let's take a look how a business manager or a knowledge worker will interact with the case. So knowledge worker has access to case via workspace. So this case workspace will include all the case related objects. It could include case data, it could include case documents, it may include case history and audit trails, etc. And the knowledge worker or the person owning that case may work on the case activities, for example, review the property appraisal documents for a particular loan, and she may add documents to it, collaborate with the workers or with other subject matter experts to gain more input, to gain more information about a case. And depending on the context and the situation, knowledge worker may create more tasks and may add more people to the case. So there may also be certain business rules and policies associated with the case that will determine what is the next action based on a particular condition or based on a certain set of conditions or events. And we may also want to enforce the constraints within which the knowledge worker needs to work. So that is all driven by the business rules component of adaptive case management. And then there is case analytics, which provides business manager with insight into case processing and can also recommend actions to the knowledge worker. So this can provide 
to, for example, a contextual offer to the customer. So when you have a certain issue going on with the customer, you're resolving a customer case, and then you may want to offer free one-month service, the system can recommend those kind of actions to you and even guide the workers or the knowledge workers and the agents on what to do next with that particular case, what should be the next step in the process. So that kind of decision management and analytical feedback is available to the knowledge workers to work on a particular case. This is where users work on their cases. The knowledge workers can come to their workspace to start working on a case. This will list all the cases that are present in their inbox. It could be claims, it could be reviews, it could be approvals, it could be appraisals. So all those cases will be listed. They can select a case to see the case information and then they can pick up a case for their processing. Once the knowledge worker picks a case, for example, low number 452 to work on, they come to this case overview screen. As you see, it includes all the information about a case and provides a very detailed overview of what is happening with that particular case, with that particular loan, or with that particular claim. So you can monitor the milestone, how the case is progressing, how much of the case is complete. You can see all the case stakeholders. These could include other agents, other company employees, or even customers or partners which are part of the case. You can see the threads of case activities completed or the activities which are in progress, and you can also see the discussion threads from various collaboration activities. So you get the full view of what is happening with that particular case. Another important feature of this case detail screen is this activity rating. Unlike the structured and repeatable processes, in adaptive case management, the importance and priority of activity can also change from case to case. And here you can do that. You can change the priority or the importance of particular activity. This is all part of being adaptive. So as I mentioned earlier, since in adaptive case management, there can be situations where the knowledge workers need to add activities or add more performers or stakeholders to the case at runtime. With Oracle BPM Suite, they can very easily do that. They can decide what should be the next activity, so they are not bound by the rigid, predefined structured process. It is very flexible in nature. You can pick what should be the next activities. You can add more activities to the case. And also, who should participate in the case? Who should do that particular activity? You can determine all that in a flexible way at runtime. Now, rules. So rules or policies are important component of case management. So the rules define when a task is to be performed or removed from a case, when can you say that a milestone is completed, or what actions are required when certain conditions are met. So you can create rules about sequence of the activities or prerequisites of the activities that, okay, such and such things are required before we can perform this activity, before we can approve this thing, or before a loan can go for funding or for appraisal. So we can define all the prerequisites before certain activities can happen. So there is a lot of flexibility, but also there is a provision to put certain policies and rules in place. So with Oracle BPM Suite, all such policies can be defined in a very user-friendly view and can be changed if the business needs change. So these rules adapt to the changing policies. As I earlier mentioned, the content is also a very critical component of a case. For example, in a car insurance claim, kind of a case, so you may need to add pictures of the accident, you may need to add eyewitness reports, you may need to add report from a hospital or police reports, and you may have to check in and check out various agreements or policies from the document management system, and you can do that. So Oracle BPM Suite provides integration with content management system that allows you to include any form of content. This content may include video, it may include voice, it may include pictures, that can become part of the case and can be routed along with the case. A case may also include many activities or what we call as guided processes. With Oracle BPM Suite, you can include a guided process as part of a case and monitor the progress of activity via activity guides. So you can very easily track how the activities are being performed, what is the progress, what is the status of a particular activity, and you can monitor the whole case. So the visibility, even though there is a lot of flexibility around, you are not compromising on the visibility around the process or the visibility around the case, which stage the particular claim is, in which stage the particular loan is. So all that information is available to you. Collaboration. So many activities in a case 
may need collaboration between people. So you should be able to search subject matter experts via skill search and even via recommendation networks. So we provide capability for knowledge workers to see what other knowledge workers are recommending, what person to go to if certain situation occurs. And this kind of network charts are available where you can search for people based on skills and based on recommendations and you can pick those people and agents or workers or experts to make them a part of the case itself. So this allows to bring together people for collaboration, but it also keeps record of all the discussions and collaboration for future reference or for traceability purposes. Now let's discuss a little bit about social aspect of it and how we can add more social capabilities as part of adaptive case management. So customers share a lot of information about company, about the products in the social networks. And making social channels a part of your process, a part of your case, allows you to engage with customers to resolve their issues or even to harvest new product ideas from social networks. Uh, take for example a customer tweet can kick off a case which can create a help desk ticket. So in this example, you see that the system is listening to various customer tweets and then taking it through a certain sentiment analysis to figure out whether the customer is happy with the product, whether this is a happy tweet, this is a very dissatisfied customer, and this is a really annoyed customer, and we need to tackle this customer right away. So you can either automatically create cases or you can pick tweets from the social network, whether it is Facebook or even from Twitter, and pick those posts and create cases cases as per your needs. So this is a good way to kind of keep track of your customer sentiment as well as make it actionable so that you can actually do something about it. Next is adding mobile capabilities to your case management. So your customers or even your field service agents need mobile support so that they can interact with the process, interact with the case, whether it's a claim or a loan, no matter where they are. So mobile applications it lets users we are using various smart devices. Integrating mobile and voice with processes, it improves customer experience as it allows them to make a purchase or even report a problem or accept an offer while they are on the move. More importantly, it also makes use of mobile information, the mobile context like photos, like location or time to make contextual decisions or recommendations to the user. So take for example, a customer can file an insurance claim for a car accident right at the scene of accident using a mobile application. A customer can take up pictures of the accident with their camera phone and the mobile application automatically fills in all the customer data. It automatically fills in location data, it automatically fills the name and the type of policy they have without customers spending long hours on the phone. So it all ensures a good customer experience during the time of need. So let me quickly go over what is in Oracle BPM Suite. So Oracle offers a very business-driven BPM Suite that empowers business users as well as the knowledge workers to have more control of their process, more control around their business processes, as well as facilitate collaboration between business and IT as well as business people themselves. Secondly, it is a complete suite for all flavors of the processes, from human-centric processes to system-centric processes, processes that are very document-heavy, and from structured processes to what we discussed today, unstructured adaptive case management processes. So it is all part of the same suite. Oracle also offers pre-built best practice processes and templates for quick time to solution. Now, these are pre-built applications built on top of Oracle BPM Suite, and we call them Oracle Process Accelerators. So in summary, uh, customers demand experience that is contextual and that is personalized. Rigid on structured processes do not always deliver that right customer experience. So many times we need to adapt to the customer's needs, we need to adapt to the situations to make sure that customer is being served in the best way possible. Adaptive case management lets you serve the customers by empowering the knowledge workers to manage very unstructured and very unpredictable processes. And Oracle offers a unified BPM case management and content management capabilities, which is crucial for delivering the right customer experience at the right time to the right customers as and when required. So I will end my presentation now. So here are some of the resources where you can learn more about Oracle BPM Suite. I highly encourage you to 
please go and look at these resources on our website, on our blogs, as well as become part of our Twitter and Facebook community. And thanks for listening today. So let me turn it back to Vance for some question and answers. Ajay, a terrific session and a terrific look at what I think is going to be a very powerful new trend here in BPM and taking a lot of the skills and disciplines that people have learned over the years and turning them from just internal process efficiency to really reap some terrific customer rewards. So with your permission, let's go right to the questions. Definitely. You know, one of the ones I think is kind of a level set question about just overall the trends that Oracle is seeing among its customers. And specifically, the question says, what types of adaptive case management projects are you seeing from your existing BPM customers? Definitely, Vas. So the situations or the business conditions where people are looking for adaptive case management are not like really one and done processes. So it is not about enrolling for a new credit card or even employee onboarding processes, which are very well-defined processes, which can be designed or defined at the design time. But these are the processes which need a lot more investigation. For example, insurance claims management. So we cannot really define during the design time that what all activities will be required for a particular claim because we do not know what is the situation, whether there is an injury, what kind of vehicle is involved, whether there is a death in that particular incident. So we cannot envision all the permutation and combinations. People have tried to build these processes with standard BPM, but Standard BPM gives so many constraints to the users that it becomes really inefficient and impossible to manage these kind of processes which are unpredictable in nature using the standard BPM modeling. So these kind of investigative processes or investigative service request claims kind of processes or benefit eligibility processes are very suitable for adaptive case management. So adaptive case management has to be part of the BPM suite itself so that we can leverage the same artifacts that have been developed for other processes. And we can use the same user interfaces. We can use similar data information, information models. We can use the same processes and even process fragments in the overall case. So the case can decide which step or which process or which process fragment has to be invoked at the runtime. But again, it needs to work in conjunction with business process management suite. So we are reusing those artifacts, but we are providing a flexibility at the runtime to the knowledge worker, to the agent, to make the decision at the runtime. On the other hand, we are also providing capabilities of business rules where you can define the constraints around which the knowledge worker has to work. So it is not like free for all kind of a thing. You still have to follow policies. There are still governance and compliance needs to be met. So with the rules, you can actually say that, okay, if this is a situation, these kind of activities can be done. To do this particular activity in a case, you must do these particular activities. And then the third aspect is around helping in decision management. So if this call center has 20,000 agents, we do not expect all these 20,000 agents to be experts in all sorts of issues. So giving them help with analytics, giving them help with real-time decision management by system, recommending them next actions or the next activities, we can really empower these knowledge workers to make informed decisions to work on a particular case. Very powerful. In fact, let me turn now to uh, getting my hands dirty sort of question, which I think is probably running through the minds of many of the attendees here. It simply says, Ajay, we love the idea of using process to better connect with customers and meet their needs. What can I get with the Oracle process accelerators and other features in Oracle BPM Suite to get started quickly? Sure. So as I said, that Oracle process accelerators, these are pre-built processes, production-grade processes, which you can straight away start using right away, or you can modify to your needs. And depending on the type of process, it may also include adaptive case management kind of capabilities. So we have accelerators like employee onboarding, or we have accelerators like approvals workflow or loan originations. So that is a good way to start your project, and if you have similar needs, you can just take the process accelerator, run it, and see if it actually meets your need. Or if you need to modify those accelerators, you can easily do that too. So it gives you a kind of a head start and quick time to solution to where you want to be in your BPM project. 
And as people look at the tools, just a quick follow-up on that, Ajay, is it a configuration model? Do they move things around and adjust maybe something in a form, or is it actual programming? Uh, no, it is the same thing as business process management tool will provide you. So you can use graphical modeling tool to change the process as per your particular need. You have graphical user interface form builders to modify the existing forms as per your need. So it is not that much of writing a code to modify it, but you can use the same tools which we use to design that process, to design that particular user interface, to define particular rules. You can use the same tools as an end user, as a business user, as a business analyst, to modify the process, to configure that process to your needs. In Oracle BPM Suite, case is a first-class object. So you can work with case objects as you work with other components in business process management suite, and it very well kind of consumes the artifacts or the components created by BPM Suite. And as I said, that you can use the same tools to kind of work with the case or work with a well-defined structured process. Excellent, excellent. This has really been terrific, Ajay. As you might expect, we've got a question about integration. After all, it is Integration Developer News mm -hmm. uh, sponsoring yes. BPMCon. And so the question here says, it seems like getting events or alerts or even having those automatic forms that you mentioned, Ajay, would require some integration with my various different systems. Can you explain the role of integration in doing adaptive case management? That's an excellent question because to ensure a good customer experience, I mean, you may need to kind of go to various systems. If you have a claims process or a claims case, you may need to go to your CRM system, you may need to go to your billing system, you need to go to your document management system and bring in various documents or information to process a case. And while the case is being processed, you may need to kind of put those information back in various systems. So integration definitely is a very key component in adaptive case management too. And for integrating with these underlying systems and underlying applications, we always had uh, very robust capabilities, one of the best capabilities uh, out there in, in industry. And you can integrate any kind of system and bring information to be part of your case, whether it is content, whether it is customer data, whether it is customer analytics. So you can bring all the data back and make the decisions depending on the information you're receiving from the underlying systems. That's terrific. That's a very terrific overview, Ajay. One last question. Talk a little bit about some examples you've seen about how a more flexible adaptive case management approach rather than a very rigid BPM approach is bringing customer benefit. Sure, Vance. In many cases, we see that, take for example, calling into a call center and trying to create a dispute on your credit card bill. So you have received a credit card bill and then you want to dispute a charge, you call them back and try to create a case. So what happens is that knowledge worker has a capability, has empowerment to make sure that you are being addressed as a unique entity. So they are not pushing you through a standard rigid process which was defined like 10 years back and asking unnecessary information what is your old address and give me this security question and when that agent is passing you to another department, you are repeating that information, none of that. So what agent can do is that this is the particular situation. I know everything about the customer. I know all the old cases that customer has created. I know what card the customer already has. So I have all that information and now I need to make decision and how to help this customer the best way I can. So there is empowerment in the hand of knowledge worker to decide what should be the next activity, what should be the next best action I need to do so that I can help this customer as fast as possible and as well as as per to their particular needs. So I'm not unnecessarily pushing customer through the maze of processes which have no consequence of what the customer is actually wanting to do. So that's what we want this knowledge worker to have, that kind of power to deliver that kind of customer experience. So it is even more flexible than if-then because you have to predefine if-then statements here. It is like event-driven, like if this situation has happened and that situation has happened and these two things have happened within two hours of each other, this is the kind of activity you need to do. So system can prompt you with that kind of activity as well as depending on these situations and depending on all the artifacts that are in front of the knowledge worker, they can make quick decisions, informed decision on what should be the next best action to be done. So it is much more flexible.
Very good, very good. And the benefit here is not just the knowledge worker can efficiently get through a case with the customer, but hopefully the big payoff here is that the response from the knowledge worker to the customer is more valuable to the customer and not just expediting the case for the company. Exactly, exactly, yep. Wow, this has been terrific. This is a really powerful trend, I think, in BPM. And now that we know how we can get started using the skills we have already learned, an even more powerful session. Ajay Khanna, Director of BPM Product Marketing at Oracle, thanks very much, especially for taking so many questions on this very new and exciting arena. My pleasure, Vance. Thank you so much. And just a quick reminder to all of our attendees, as we love to do, Ajay mentioned a lot of resources there and a lot of business and technology topics. We've got a list of links to take you to some terrific Oracle resources that we weren't able to put up here in the breakout room this morning, but they are available via this slide of links. And thanks, everyone, for joining.